Before I get into today's episode about Teddy Bridgewater, I just want to let you guys know that today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. Of course, SeatGeek, you all know it, you all love it. It's the best place to get tickets to pretty much any event, but especially sporting events. Obviously, you guys like football if you're watching this channel, and you can get great deals on football games, on baseball games, or honestly, just events in general. But the deals can get even better, because if you use the promo code JKS on your first purchase, you'll save 20 bucks just like that. All you have to do is enter the promo code JKS. The link is in the description below if you're interested. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. So there are many quarterbacks who ended up starting a game that we probably didn't think were going to be starting a game this season. And one of those guys was Teddy Bridgewater. I think a lot of people were just really curious to see how he was going to do with the Saints because, I mean, you know, we hadn't seen him too much play at all since he left the Vikings, and then he played a couple of games, you know, he played one game with the Saints, and then he also came in in relief last week, but neither one of those two outings were particularly spectacular, but it was interesting to see how would he play in his first meaningful start since really before his injury, and I thought he played pretty well. I mean, for one thing, honestly, my biggest takeaway was just that this Saints offense is really good. They have some really good players, they have a good line. Michael Thomas obviously and Alvin Kamara and also having guys like Tengen Jr. and also Jared Cook it, it can help your team a lot but really the real guy that makes this offense move is Michael Thomas he clearly is their number one receiver and so I thought that Teddy Bridgewater did a very good job of attacking him as often as he could get the ball to your best player and that's either Kamara or Thomas but in the receiving game that's Thomas and so get the ball to him as much as you can so like on this play it's going to be a cover one blitz and they have Michael Thomas running a slant route right over there just getting right over the middle and so that's a great route against this coverage and that is where Teddy Bridgewater is going to look to throw this ball to but what I like about this from Bridgewater is if you notice I mean obviously Michael Thomas is pretty wide open right here he got open very quickly so already a win and you don't really have to worry about the blitz too much since he is open so quickly but if you look at Teddy look at how quick he's making his decision that's what you love to see guys who are going to make their decisions quickly Bridgewater is then able to make a good throw Michael Thomas makes the catch and they pick up a big gain but one of the real reasons they did pick up that big gain was just because Bridgewater didn't hesitate because he made that throw just in an instance he knew before the snap, I'm going to look to throw to Thomas, and then two seconds later, he sees Thomas is open, so that's where he's throwing the ball to instantly. Good throw and just good decision making by Bridgewater. That's kind of the thing about Bridgewater, you know, we haven't seen him play in any significant playing time since 2015, and also, a lot of people would say, even back then, he wasn't really lighting the world on fire. I mean, he's never thrown 15 touchdowns in a season, and he's never passed 3,300 yards in a season, so those numbers are certainly far from lighting the world on fire, but at the same time, kind of the reason why people are still so optimistic on him was because how young he was in those first two seasons he played. I mean, he was 22 and 23 in those seasons, now he's 26, so we've much been completely robbed of his entire development so to speak we don't know exactly how he would have came in and how he would have played if he was playing in those games and you know he didn't get that injury we don't know what would have happened so it's nice to see him not only be able to be athletically back to what he once was but also making smarter decisions you know he kind of looks like Drew Brees light out there you know he's he's doing a really good job Obviously, nobody will ever be Drew Brees, but he's still playing very well, and there's this one that I also really liked, where it's going to be a cover two zone, and for the Saints, those are the routes that their receivers will be running. And so for Bridgewater, well, what did he do on his last play? It was, look for Michael Thomas, and that'll be your first read. And on this play, Michael Thomas is running that route right there, which is actually great against this coverage. He's going to cut right before the safeties, it is going to be a gap in coverage, and so Bridgewater, who probably is going to look that way already, is definitely going to try to make a throw in that direction if Thomas is open. And so after the ball is snapped, as you see, I mean, it worked out perfectly. Thomas is easily going to get open here. Worth mentioning, these throws are always kind of risky because if you are inaccurate and in really any direction, it could result in an interception. So while Thomas is definitely open here, you know, if he makes a bad throw and throws it too shallow, a linebacker could pick it off. Or if he makes a bad throw and overthrows Thomas, well then a seed he can pick it off. So while these type of plays are very high percentage plays in terms of gaining some yards, there also is a higher percentage of an interception happening. However, Teddy is going to make a great throw and they get the first down out of it, so good play by Bridgewater. I know it might look like it was actually a little bit high, but that's actually what you want to do in that situation. You want to throw it basically in between where the linebackers are and where the safeties are. You trust that Michael Thomas can make a catch where he might have to leap up six inches to make the grab. You're not really too concerned about that. And so a lot of you guys might be saying, well, so what? So he just threw it to Michael Thomas every play. I mean, that's not really anything too special. Defenses will soon catch on that that's what he's doing. They'll just double team Michael Thomas a lot, and then he'll have nowhere to throw the ball to. And yes, I mean, that is a fair point. Michael Thomas is definitely his number one receiver. It's definitely the guy that Bridgewater is going to look to throw to more frequently. However, he doesn't rely on Michael Thomas. He just likes to use him since Michael Thomas is his best receiver. 
like on this play, that's going to be Thomas's route, and actually, it's going to get covered up pretty well. As you see after this ball is snapped, it's, the Seahawks do a very good job of covering this up, and Michael Thomas has really nowhere to go. Obviously, that kind of thing happens. Michael Thomas isn't going to get open on every single play, but now for Bridgewater, he has to find a plan B, because his plan A is no longer open. But one thing he's going to do is just look around and realize, hey, there's a gap right there, right near the offensive line, that I can just run through and potentially gain some yards this way. So he's just going to take what's there, you know? Take what the defense gives you, he's going to run up there and get close to the 20-yard line just because that's what the defense gave him. But again, really, his use of Michael Thomas has been so effective in that first game. He definitely looked at Michael Thomas a lot, and for good reason, Michael Thomas gets open a lot, especially when Seattle, they have a lot of good players, but they don't really have like a true number one corner that can successfully, consistently cover Thomas. I know Thomas's stats actually just ended up with five receptions for 54 yards and one touchdown. That's not really anything too crazy, but I thought he was really good out there and really just did so much for that offense like one last play it's going to be a cover one hole and that's his route just a quick curl route and if you look at thomas watch how well he is going to run this route i mean as you see right when this route ends he is just wide open but again, for Bridgewater, give him credit. He's currently into throwing motion. He times this one absolutely perfectly. Thomas gets easily open, and then Bridgewater is able to make the throw, and they get inside the 10-yard line. I mean, it's just, it's plays like that. Do the little things, and the rest of the work will come. I mean, it's plays like that. It's, if you're Teddy Bridgewater, just do the little things. Don't focus on the big picture stuff. You have some talented guys. They can do the big picture stuff. You just make the throw. Have faith that Thomas will be able to make those plays. You just keep making throws. And there's this one also, where it's going to be a pick play, where those two Saints are going to go out to block those two Seahawks right there. And then for Thomas, he makes the catch, and then runs basically in between them, gets a touchdown. That's how the play is supposed to work on paper. But now here's the trick. Yes, this is going to be a pretty easy situation where all you have to do is make a throw to Thomas. It seems like it's almost a screen pass where, you know, he doesn't have too much to worry about here, really. But that's actually not true. If he doesn't hit Thomas in the right spot, let's say he misses him kind of a little bit to the bottom half of the screen a little bit too much or overthrows it or something, it could actually be a disaster. The whole thing about this play is you want to hope that Michael Thomas can make the catch and not have to actually slow him down at all. You want him to make the catch while he's running up to the top half of the screen and then he's able to just run into the end zone because it's worth mentioning this is a fourth down here so they have to convert on this one there is no extra play this is fourth down you got to get the touchdown here but watch Bridgewater's throw it's just a perfect throw Thomas is able to catch it and then just fall into the end zone for a touchdown I mean while there were a lot of those plays that was Thomas kind of making Teddy Bridgewater look better I think that play was a good example of Bridgewater making Thomas look better one last play I liked was this one. It's going to be a cover two zone, and then what they're going to do is just have a receiver run a curl route right over there, and then hopefully he'll get into a gap in coverage. Bridgewater can hit him. You can pick up some yards. This is a third down and eight situation, so it is important for them to be able to convert and get the first down here. And after the ball is snapped, if you notice, there's not exactly a huge window where Carr is open here. He's a little bit open, but there are two Seahawks in either direction. So timing, accuracy, and arm strength are all going to be important here. Bridgewater has to try to fit it through that window. Obviously, the quicker you get it through there, the better, because the Seahawks that are around him will try to close in that gap. And also, he has to be accurate. He can't miss this throw in any direction, or it could be deflected, or even intercepted if he misses it bad enough. But again, he throws a great throw. It actually isn't complete, but that wasn't Bridgewater's fault. He made a great throw, and that should have been a first down, honestly. It wasn't his fault. You can only control what you can control. But essentially, my point with showing that play and showing a lot of these plays is that this offense is not a disaster without Drew Brees. Obviously, it's better with Drew Brees. No one's going to argue that. But Bridgewater can hold his own. There's a reason New Orleans made him the highest paid backup in the league last year. It's the reason they gave him a lot of money. Because they felt like, listen, we want to make sure we can win a championship. And if Drew Brees does miss six games like it looks like he's going to, can we get a guy who can win three of them? That's what Bridgewater has to do. Just keep the team afloat. And he's doing that and then some. I mean, I think a lot of guys predicted the Seahawks to win this game. But... Bridgewater was able to help them really win it handedly. I mean, Seattle was at one point getting outscored by 20 points at this game. I mean, the Saints really were playing at a very high level for throughout this game. And it wasn't just Bridgewater. Kamara also had a fantastic game. I know people are going to look at Bridgewater's stats and say, well, only 177 yards. He did have two touchdowns and no interceptions, but... You know, 177 yards, that's not really anything too great. And admittedly, it isn't, but that's also not what Bridgewater is as a quarterback. He's not the type of guy that's going to push the ball downfield on every play. He is very much a methodical thrower. But that's also kind of why he's the perfect backup. He's not going to turn the ball over very often. He's going to be making these, you know, dink and dunk type throws. Just try to get the ball downfield and just let your talented players do the rest of the work. 
I have to imagine this win just felt amazing for the Saints. I have to think that they were just so concerned about how are we going to do without Drew Brees. And the answer is, well, they can still play well. I'm not going to say Bridgewater is going to be as good as Drew Brees. Obviously, he isn't. But, you know, if they can just pick up a couple of wins while Brees is out, that can just do so much in the long term. To have the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football coming up, that'll be an interesting test to see how they do. But I think this could be very fascinating. I'd like to know what you guys thought of Teddy Bridgewater's performance. Let me know in the comments below. And as always... Thanks for watching.